It was bad, man. I went through a bunch of wrecks. That's what led up to, you know, Pocono. And yeah. that wreck, I was, I was gone. I was in outer space. I knew it. The doctors knew it. And they said, you can't race. Yeah. And it changes things. It's the Kenny Wallace Conversation brought to you by Jax. Had my brother Rusty on and uh, Rusty and I had a great conversation uh, about the wrecks that he was in at Daytona. And we were talking about recovering, you know, from his Daytona wreck. And Rusty said, Rusty said, you know, to this day when I get in the shower, uh, he said, you know, and I, if I close my eyes and I'm, you know, washing my hair, he says, I, I, I get dizzy. And I feel like all race car drivers, even me, I mean, I had a positional vertigo, you know, I lost a championship because of it. So you've been world news lately. You decided to retire from NASCAR because as hard as you tried, you just couldn't be where you wanted to be. So, um, you know, just looking back at your announcement a couple of weeks ago, uh, just address that a little bit, you know, about how you feel right now and what's up. Yeah, I mean, long story long. You know, there's never a long short story, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it, it, you, you were world news and I, and I appreciate you talking to me about this. No, it, um, for me, you know, when I was with Ganassi and Monster Energy was looking at, you know, moving the sponsorship to Ty Gibbs and, you know, maybe another driver was going to take over. And then Ganassi sold the team. It, it was like, you know what, this is, this is, I'm good. I'm satisfied with where everything ended up, you yeah. know, by winning Daytona late in my career, winning a championship early in my career. Yeah, I get you know, it. Run an Indy, run in a pro stock car down at the Gator Nationals yeah. way back. Wow. You know, I missed that one, but I did see that. <laughs> hey, I got you. I was going to get that one in there. NHRA. Uh, but a phone call came in. A phone call came in from three different people. One was Denny Hamlin. Mm. One was Toyota, the director of their motorsports program. And one was this guy, the, the goat named Michael Jordan. Wow. Yeah. And those three wanted me to come and race for them and start a second car at 2311. And I said, guys, I, I think I, I fulfilled everything that I've wanted to do, but I'll tell you what I did, Kenny. I'll tell you what I said, guys, thank you. Let me think about this. Yeah. And I went to an old friend, a mentor of mine named Mark Martin. Mark, the kid Martin. And I asked Mark, I go, Mark, why did you stay in it so many years after you said you were going to retire? And he says, Kurt, because the phone kept ringing. Mm. Talent. I, I said, done. You got it. I understand. Yes, sir. And so I called Denny back. I called MJ back. I called the director of Toyota Motorsports. <laughs> and I said, I'm in. And I said, Monster, we got ourselves a team that we're going to go build. And we're going to win together. I said, yeah. we did that at SHR. We did that with Ganassi. Let's go do it again. Yeah. And so that's how the 2311 ride came about in the number 45 car. And, you know, I, I had to get, I had to dig deep, you know, I'm 44 at the time, you know, 44 years old. And, you know, the gym is tougher each day to get out of with your body's hurting more. So, and now there's more therapists that I'm working with and massages and doing yoga and me breathing, too. Right. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> with age is a bitch <laughs> yeah you're right right <laughs> it really is <laughs> and so the season was going well things started off great in 2022 with the new team and um you know we wrecked a couple times bristol dirt that one that one i knew i was thrown for a loop um i i was i was seeing things yeah the lights were moving like you said with rusty vertigo and things like that i didn't feel right and I almost didn't get approved to race Talladega. I was mm. under concussion protocol in the underground. Mm. I got approved on Saturday before Talladega. I worked my butt off that whole week, right? And I'm going for the lead on the last lap around Kyle Larson. And he comes up, changes lanes, and I hit the wall 39 Gs mm. in the trial. 39, Jesus. And back in the infield care center, I couldn't walk. Like, I fractured my right foot. I wrecked at Dover. I wrecked at Darlington. Uh, there was the Coke 600 here. I, it was like a ping pong ball bouncing off cars at the end of stage. Being abused. Yeah. It was bad, man. I went through a bunch of wrecks. That's what led up to, 
you know, Pocono and yeah. that wreck, I was, I was gone. I was in outer space. I knew it. The doctors knew it. And they said, you can't race. Yeah. And it changes things, you know, yeah. and the rehab and everything that I'm going through still, I'm much, much better from where I was a year ago at this time. And I have to thank all the doctors. Uh, the Toyota Performance Center has helped me a ton with the workouts and the stretching and just the continued effort. Uh, but my arthritis and, and th different things swelling up in my body now, because I'm working out too much, just that's why it became too much. Yeah. And I said, you know what, I got to make this decision. And I want Tyler Reddick, you know, to make it feel like it's his car. Yeah. Like it's his team and that'll help us advance quicker. And so it was a tough decision, but it wasn't like the one moment from Pocono. It was a lot of things. And right. that's why I wanted to tell you this long story long. No, I know I needed I needed every bit of that because I believe it, it. You know, it's a decision. You know, when Tyler got in the car and you were an, I mean, I learned a lot from you because I grew up in the day where my brother Rusty didn't care for Ryan Newman just being his teammate and Dale Senior didn't like Mike Skinner being his teammate. And I I really thought that you you caring for Tyler Reddick was really pretty incredible. Uh, you showed a lot of love, a lot of support there and. Without you telling that story right there, you know, that 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 gets me to where, you know, what a ride. And uh, you you went all the way. And, uh, man, I don't know how you're going to feel about this one because I feel like it's one thing that added to your retirement. But that's my opinion. What is your opinion on this this new next gen car? Yeah, it's a, it, it's got its issues and there's been changes made since my accident, uh, since Bowman's. Uh, I think uh, Noah Gregson was held out a race or two. You know, it's rigid. It is very stiff, and it's built to protect a guy like um, Priest that wrecked at Daytona, mm, right? Yeah. Wasn't that nasty? The or car's built to withstand the 200-mile-per-hour Daytona, Talladega, big, big wrecks. And all the middle-sized wrecks, all the smaller – Bump drafting even is more rigid in this car. That's where we've got to continue to soften it up at certain tracks. Right. And they did that with the rear clip. They've done that with different headrests and inserts. I mean, I exaggerated my wreck because I leaned forward knowing when I was going to back in. But it's like primal fear. If something's coming from behind, you're like, oh, man, don't yeah. hit me. So my head was away from the headrest. And so when I hit, I exaggerated everything. And I don't even remember the car hitting with the right front. So, cause I was in outer space. Yeah. But it needs its continued development. I think we've seen a lot of cars hit this year and the rear gets, gets crumpled up in a better man and in a better manner, but let's just keep working on it. Let's just keep committed to it. But it, the, the sled tests and the data still gotta be right. You can't fabricate that stuff. It's gotta be real.